it's very hard for me uh, to to ha to kind of judge those people because I I've been here so many times and I've lived here and I kind of understand in a way um, the absurdity of of taking that kind of stance. Well, it seems to me that's kind of an absurd thing to do. But at the same time, if I think back to before I came to Israel. You have to understand a lot of these bands that come to Israel, uh, or, or cancel the shows that come to Israel, uh, after planning to come to Israel, for them it was like part of a long tour. Israel is no more important or less important than any other show on the tour. They don't have family connections here, they, they don't have any personal ties to Israel. So if there's even the slightest threat or the slightest kind of reason perhaps why um, maybe they shouldn't come to Israel, uh, or the slightest bit of pressure, maybe from an outside group or something, it's probably, it's very easy for them to say, okay, well, we won't bother going, you know. I wouldn't do that because Israel is very important to me. Um, but for many other bands, it's just another show, on a ver potentially on a very long tour. So if they start getting some death threats or some pressure, political pressure from their fan base or or they're worried about their security, or I find more often it's not the, it's not the people in the band that are worried, it's, the, it's their family that are worried. For example, the only people that have ever pressured me not to come to Israel uh, have been my, my family, because they're worried about me. I wasn't worried for me, but they were. So I think you tend to get a lot of pressure from outside as well. If I may say something, yeah. uh, think th one thing I cannot accept, I definitely understand the family worried about it and and I understand a bands that might be you know afraid I would ask why would you book the concert in the first place I mean if if you and me are for example Elvis Costello or Pixies or now Roger Waters that said that you should boycott Israel why would you do it to your fans in Israel I mean right go from from uh, from day one say I'm not going to be there, situation is not clear, my family might be concerned. You know this is Israel, Right. this is not like uh, out of the blue, you know what's going on here. Right. Say it from day one, I'm not going to deal with it, don't say that you're coming, let your fans buy the ticket, Right. spit in their face, send them to get... Right. But I think, I, I was thinking specifically about last year when the, when the whole thing happened with the flotilla, and I think that yeah. was, because I know that was when the Pixies cancelled, wasn't it? Pixies, Robert, uh, yeah. uh, Elvis Costello. Yeah. And uh, yeah, many others. And they book the show. Yeah. Even even after, I mean, they book it and then they just they just cancel it. And right. That's what I cannot accept. I mean, yeah, fine. Of course, you have a family. They don't want you here. Just say, I'm not going to go there. That's fair enough, you know. Well, but you could. Al I'm sure you could also conceive of a situation where you, Orphanland, might have booked a show in. For example, let's say hypothetically you'd booked a show in Libya last month. <laughs> right. You'd probably be thinking about canceling now, wouldn't you? If, if you're speaking to Kobe, <laughs> the, the answer would yeah, be no. No, okay. Yeah. But a lot of people would, your, all your family would be pressuring you to cancel. The, if I have a kids, if, yeah. if I have a family. The, no, that's an extreme example, obviously, a slightly ridiculous example. Yeah. But that's, that's a, a kind of analogy. I think if, a, if something happens in the meantime, which it did in the case last year with the flotilla incident, then I think it does change things. It change, And yes, you're right, you could say, well... When you book the show, you must have been aware that something like that could happen. But people don't think like that, do they really? Just, just to, to make a slight difference, Flotilla yeah. didn't create Israel to no. be a war zone like no, Libya, for no, example. And, and that's, mean, so I'm using an ex exaggerated yeah. example, uh, you're right. But yeah, I, I understand this point. Yeah. Still, I think that you know, we're, we're musicians, we have fans, you know it, you're in touch with fans, and, and fans are important to you, I know mm. that. There's got to be a way or a golden way that you can you can still find a way to make it up to them. I mean, because that feels for me as an artist and as mm -hmm. a musician that also I have fans that they're spitted in their face just like that, easily. And yeah, they said yeah, it's Israel. It's just another small tiny place in the world. But yeah, you have their fans. People sometimes ask me, will you go and play in uh, Gaza? where the Hamas wants you dead, or will you go to uh, a Nazi city where all the Nazis are? Right. The answer is yes. If I have 20 fans over there, I'll go there for those fans. Not everyone, obviously not everyone thinks like that. Some, yeah. For some people, and I think a lot of music, we're talking about the start of the older generation of musicians, we're talking about Elvis Costello, the Pixies. These are guys that have been around for 25 years, 30, 35 years in the case of Elvis Costello. Probably by now, 
going on tour has just become a job to them. Yeah. I don't think they have the same connection with their fan base that that uh, bands that have that work in the more underground have. And and you you might have a point, and I think maybe some of these artists are going to realise the hard way that alienating their fans, particularly in this particular day and age when when the record sales business is is basically yeah, disappearing. I'll, I'll tell you something. Roger yeah. Waters just said, um, I think it was three weeks ago. He just said that artists should boycott Israel. With that said, he played in Israel. Right. <laughs> he played in Israel a year and a half. So he came here. Yeah. Played. Played the show. Took the money. Took the money. And now he's a fucking hero. You should well, boycott it, Israel. Yeah. <laughs> Where's well, a grumpy? I cannot listen to Pink Floyd. You know, I fucking love the band. Right. I cannot now listen to them. I cannot right. hear his voice. He he destroyed whatever right. Pink Floyd meant to me. He just destroyed it. Right. It's unbelievable. That's that's very unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah, very it is. unfortunate. It is, and and what I'm trying to say is, if you are against the government of Israel, that's fine. We're living in a in an open-minded world. Mm. Say your opinion, uh, even if it's against the policy of the government. Mm. The way of the artist is not to boycott. I don't think the artist. We use a, a very high level of of communication, of mm. dialogue, which is mm. music. Mm. We touch people's hearts, mm. and and if we start to be politicians, I think we just destroy it. I agree. Uh, I agree. I, I've always felt very uncomfortable with the idea of, of musicians trying to be politicians. Yeah. I, one of the reasons I really have never been able to get warm to you too is because Bono actually believes he can influence the politics of the people that listen to his music. And I don't believe, and Bruce Springsteen is the same, I don't believe musicians should do that. Or at least I think you can do that, but in a much more um, organic way. You can open people's minds yeah. through music but you let them make up their own mind and this whole thing about t- trying to tell your fans this is what you should think this is who you should vote for this is what you should believe I've always felt very 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 uncomfortable same with that. here same here I, I've never me or any other guy of the band never exposed yeah. our political uh, opinions never no yeah. one knows if we are right wing or right. left wing even though that our texts are dealing with uh, you know the Middle East situation mm. in a way but, but it's never on on a taking side position right never right so yeah i agree with you